Hey you. Hi. What's up? I'm good. I'm already tired. So we did that review of these other headphones the other time, which mm -hmm. you know people can find on the screen somewhere. What do you think of that review? What do I think of the review? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I could have been more succinct. Yeah. And better in speaking. And I wish I had a more background knowledge of it. But maybe that's the whole point that I, not like the expert of it, but more like the someone who tries, tries out for the first time. Yeah. So I'm just being what I am, and. That's what you want, I guess. Um, why do you have so much tattoos? I never thought that I have so much tattoos. Okay, that was a trap that I laid for myself. All right. Why do you have tattoos? Um, long story or a short story, you want? A uh, short one. Short one. Um, I just like to remember the things that I would forget in a year. Once I'm over a certain point, mm -hmm. I guess, like, tattoo is going to characterize me as, like, the girl with tattoo. I don't want to do that. I don't like that that's not where you're going. So at some point, you're going to stop recording your memories on your body. But, like, somewhere not very visible, like, somewhere in my belly. I guess yeah. my belly is still clean. Hmm. Speaking of which, we have a really, really clean headphones that came into the studio. <laughs> 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 that is an interesting connection. Boas and Wilkins, the English audio engineering company, has recently put out a new wireless noise cancelling headphones. And this one is called Boas and Wilkins PX7 S2. The S2 is an indication that it is an upgrade to the original PX7 released sometime in, I think, 2019. So today, we are going to be looking at this headphone. But consider this as an in depth first impression rather than a full review. I hope to make another video about these headphones when I have properly put them through its paces. So that said, let's dive in. For the first time in my life, I find myself truly drawn to headphones with a color other than black or space gray. Perhaps this is the effect of the summer because we're in summer right now, or the fact that I find myself transiting from black to blue in my outfit these days. Anyway, whatever it is, the PS7 S2 looks the most gorgeous in blue with the gold outline at the ear cups and logo. The headphones also come in black and silver, but somehow this blue feels like fresh air. I particularly have been enjoying how it blends with my outfit, and in that combination, there is something about this headphone that feels alive and joyful. Now, this joyfulness carries on onto the design of the headphones. The design of the PS7 S2 feels more like a rollback to the older PS5s than an actual upgrade to the PS7 version 1. Well, I'll just go straight to the point to say that the design is the best I've ever seen in consumer premium headphones lately. It looks premium as much as it feels sturdy. And it is really beautiful, if I do say so myself. It's light. It looks heavy, but it's light. Mm -hmm. I like it. And... Uh... But I just like this color because you don't also see this color so much from headphones. Yeah. yeah. And it's such a beautiful blue, right? Yeah. yeah. It, it looks very like good quality. I don't know how you say like. So if you compare this to the Sony XM5, which one looks more premium? It does look premium, definitely. If really you compare easy. this to the AirPods Max, which one looks more premium? Um, Design-wise, I like this more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not 
I'm not very much into Apple type of design. It's kind of intimidating sometimes when it's trying to become too futuristic and too minimalizing. Okay. And yeah, but yeah, that's also another kind of extreme. So I'm not very into that. But what does looks like headphones? Headphone says it's headphones. That's amazing. The headphone is made mainly of anodized aluminum with an elegant fabric finish on the ear cups and headband. The ear cups are now smaller than its predecessor, but quite comfortable thanks to the memory foam ear pads. Now, the one annoyance and the only tackiness that I, I find what I would call a perfect design is the fact that Boas and Wilkin still use plastic as clips for the detachable ear cups. Why didn't they go for magnets or any other system? Well, it seems to me that this function is simply for maintenance. So don't make it a habit to detach your ear cups unless you want to replace them. There's a good chance that those plastic hinges will break off sooner than later. So this is something to keep in mind. The headphone comes in an equally beautifully designed hat case with a, a fabric finish as well. It sits flush and well protected inside it. I also love that compartment for carrying cables. It feels good. It's a fabric. Mm -hmm. um, the fabric. Very kind of a little spongy and soft fabric. Yeah. It feels good. I like it. Yeah. And, but do you think that the white is yeah. going to last for a long time? Well, it's still a case. At the end of the day. As long as it's, it, it keeps the headphone safe, it's fine. Do you see how she thinks? Now she's wearing white. Mm -hmm. She's wearing white. And I'm sure if she's not going to like go and rub herself on the floor any day soon. But then I asked her about the white inside this is like, oh, it's still a case. Uh, doesn't matter. Doesn't it matter? I don't think so. I mean, once you buy it, you're happy to have this, but actually you get to use it every day. You don't even know where your headphone is at some point. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lose it. I'm definitely going to lose the headphone, uh, the case. The PS7 S2 are super comfortable when worn on the head for longer hours. The clamp force on the head is just right. And this goes for both small and large heads. This is a significant improvement coming from the PS7 version 1 that felt bulky and uncomfortable. Also, I love the fact that the headphones are more streamlined rather than, you know, form, forming a dome over your head like the previous PS7s. Now, funny enough, at 307 grams, the PS7 S2 weighs only 3 grams lesser than the previous PS7. Yet, it feels way more comfortable. Now, because of the flatness of the carrying case, the PS7 S2 will make quite a portable travel companion. The PS7 S2 has retained most, if not all, of the features from the previous version. But this time, there's been lots of improvement with a few quirks here and there. To start with, Boas & Wilkins now makes it possible to use these headphones with their music app. And for the first time, it is also possible to modify the sound signature in the app. More on this later. The headphone is equipped with four microphones for noise cancelling and pass-through, which is the same as ambient or transparency mode. The ANC of the S2 has been improved, but not so much on the level of its noise cancelling. The improvement is on the fact that it hardly affects the sound quality when turned on. That said, they work quite well, but not on the level of, say, Sony XM5s or AirPods Max. As for the ambient mode, well, there is still a long way to go for Boas and Wilkins. The only use I found for, for it is when I want to hear my environment, but without music. It's difficult to listen to your music and hear your environment at the same time, even at lowest volume. Now, overall, I think that the noise cancelling and ambient mode of this headphone shouldn't be the main reason for buying them. Something tells me that Boas and Wilkins are pulling punches when it comes to the ANC because they are perhaps concerned about how much sound quality might be affected. That said, you will find that the design of these headphones favor passive noise cancellation and the trade-off in favor of sound quality is well worth it. All operations are done with the help of buttons on the ear cups. On the right ear cup, are four buttons. The first is for power and Bluetooth pairing. The other three is for music and phone call controls. On the left ear cup is a button which can be customized in the music app for either voice assistant or 
environmental control, that is toggling between ANC, ambient and passive noise cancellation mode, which is the same as off mode. I have always been a fan of buttons for headphones operations. It's perhaps a subconscious factor when it comes to deciding which headphones will be my daily driver. And with the PS7S2, the buttons work seamlessly with no problems at all. Now with the help of the app, you can turn on standby mode as well as the wear sensor. As at the making of this video, the wear sensor is quite buggy. It kept pausing the audio content erratically regardless of the level it is set to. So I just turned it off. But I hope that uh, Boaz and Wilkins will fix this in the next firmware update. All right, I know many of you watching this video right now are watching for the segment on sound. So with no further ado, let's jump right into it. But hey, before I do that, yeah, consider subscribing to help the channel. What do you think? Um, it's not mm -hmm. super dramatic. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I I expected some very dramatic impression. Yeah. I think from the look of it. Mm -hmm. But once I try it, it's pretty gentle and yeah. All right. So to understand the sound signature of Boaz and Wilkins PS7 S2, a little bit of history is necessary. The company was founded in 1966 in England by John Boaz, whose dream was to make the perfect loudspeakers capable of delivering recorded sound that is utterly faithful to the live performance and to the artist's original intent. By 1980, the first 800 series loudspeakers was adopted by the legendary Abbey Road Studios as the studio monitor of choice. And guess what? Those speakers were not even designed as a studio monitor. It just was the best, most revealing speakers at the time. And that kicked off the relationship between Boaz and Wilkins and Abbey Road Studio, which continues until this day. Now, speaking of John Boaz, he's known to have said that the best loudspeaker isn't the one that gives the most. It is the one that loses the least. This very statement is literally the most concise way to describe the sound of the PS7 S2. It's very honest with every single sound the voice and the high note and the basses and the drums um it carries as it is very honestly but not necessarily too clear too crispy so it's comfortable to hear it for a very long time the same engineers responsible for those loudspeakers of the abbey road studio brought their expertise to these wireless headphones it is perhaps the most balanced accurate sounding wireless headphones I have come across lately. The focus is on the seamlessness of the tuning. While the previous PS7 was bass heavy with muffled mid bass and bright trebles, the S2 is like a driver in a car with steady hands on wheels across all the frequencies. And also it's not super digital. It doesn't sound super digital like it was the Apple one. But I, I don't know the technique, technology behind all these, mm -hmm. but then when I'm listening to Apple, it really sounded digital for mm -hmm. some reason, like mm -hmm. kind of finely polished in some digital way. The PS7 S2 reigned back on the temptation to make the sound colorful and gimmicky. So basically, it's the reverse of what is happening these days with uh, computational audio. Apple, AirPods Max, I'm looking at you. But what's even most remarkable is the headphone's ability to take on any genre or polyrhythmic track that you throw at it. It's almost as if it expands and contracts according to the genre and complexity of the instrument of the music you are listening to. For the bass heads, you will find that these headphones are not as punchy as, say, the Sony XM5, but the bass of every song is faithfully rendered. I like the way Yukim describes this. So the texture of each different sound and uh, the resonance of it and the echoing and the moistness was very much um, honest and soft. I mean, soft as in it's not emphasizing any different ways. It wasn't dramatic mm -hmm. and it wasn't too crispy or too clear. Just as if you are 
talking to some people in reality like it doesn't necessarily echoing or it doesn't get too clear but just like i don't know yeah at first the sound might come off as a bit flat and unexciting but over time it grows on you as pleasant listening this makes these headphones really good for daily commuting stationary work or simply easy listening you don't get the habitual ear fatigue that i believe will be the biggest challenge of our time with all the headphones competing for which one is more colorful spacious detailed blah 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 like i mentioned earlier bmw has offered a very basic equalizer to enable you adjust the sound signature to your taste you can adjust the level of the low and high frequency but nothing of the mid frequencies uh, some might see this as a downside but i like the fact that the implementation is as straightforward as volume controls in real life usage it makes it simple to add or reduce bass and treble for the specific sound you are listening to and because boas and wakens are looking to release an update for their music app which will make it possible for you to connect and control your music platform say spotify apple music title directly from their own app this simple yet intuitive equalizer makes even more sense now these cans have got tucked away somewhere a hidden superpower and that is listening to them wired so basically there is no headphone jack with the help of the usb-c cable uh, shipped with the device you can assess high-res audio listening and i tell you this makes a big difference so if you really want to get all your money's worth for these cans don't miss out on listening to them wired whenever you find yourself stationary say with your laptop or your ipad and be sure to listen with high-res audio not some crappy mp3 file also because it is the only headphones that uses its usb-c port for audio playback your headphones are being charged while you are listening to music at the same time so it's a win-win now songs from albums such as kendrick lamar's Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, but also Bonaboy's uh, newest album, which is Love Damini, all the way to genres like jazz, R&B, uh, hip hop, all of them, you know, reproduce really well with these headphones. But again, if you are a bass head or you are looking for some colored sound signature, mm, you want to think carefully before buying these headphones. This doesn't push any idea of space. Mm -hmm. For instance, Sony would makes me feel that I'm in a completely different space mm -hmm. only just by wearing this, mm -hmm. and this wouldn't really put me Push. like some extra illusional mm -hmm. emotions. If you are listening with an iPhone on Apple Music, you can listen to Dolby Atmos master tracks with the PS7s2. However, the spaciousness is not the same as using the AirPods Pro or the AirPods Max. Now, I came across an article, which I will put in the description below, which explains that Dolby Atmos tracks sound differently on Apple Music than on other music streaming platforms, such as Tidal or Amazon Music. And this is because Apple uses their own proprietary codec for delivering Dolby Atmos on Apple Music. This codec sometimes overrides the settings implemented by the sound engineer of the track in question. So. I gave it a try and instead listened to Dolby Atmos on Tidal with uh, this headphone. Indeed, there's a difference. The imaging and visualization of spaciousness is more detailed and present on Tidal than on Apple Music. And this is something to note. Some of the limitations Apple implement in favor of their ecosystem sometimes come in the way of maximizing the potentials of certain non-Apple devices. The same is the case here. For instance, if you are an Android user, you have access to Aptex HD and LDAC for high-res wireless audio listening. Apple supports only AAC codec, which is inferior to those mentioned. Now, all of this is to say that if you are an Android user, you will get better value for your money with these headphones. In addition, consider using a music streaming platform other than Apple Music. When it comes to connectivity, the headphones support multi-point connection with two devices at once this can be activated in the mobile app as for bluetooth well there's a bit of a confusion i have watched and read some reviews that says that the headphones come with 
Bluetooth 5.0. However, on the website of Boas and Wilkins, it is stated that the headphone is equipped with Bluetooth 5.2. So, which information is correct? I have no idea. Nevertheless, the Bluetooth connection is quite robust without glitches. The latency is also very good. Now, when it comes to battery, battery life is 30 hours with ANC and 15 minutes of charge gives you seven hours. But as I mentioned earlier, if you make it a habit to listen with headphones wired while stationary, and I really think you should, then the headphone charges at the same time when you're listening. In other words, depending on your workflow, you might never have to worry about charging these cans or battery and all of that. At least that's my case since I've been using it for the past days. When it comes to phone calls, uh, the device is equipped with two microphones for phone calls. Um, I use the headphones quite a bit for phone calls and voice note recording. And it sounded quite good and I did not notice any glitch whatsoever. Well, the music like Maxwell could be very um, agitating in a way because the music is very like emotionally driving mm. and it kind of gets you very personal with many things. Mm. And also there's a lot of time the engineering makes you feel very... Um, At some point, I thought you wanted to cry. Yeah, I mean, I, I wanted to cry because I, I cry sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> you, you were about to cry on that uh, when you were listening to Maxwell now. I mean, when I'm listening to Maxwell, I, 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 I feel like crying sometimes. I don't know why, because it's not a sad music. In conclusion, when it comes to design, comfort, portability, and operational features, the Boas and Wilkins PS7 S2 nails it hands down. As for sound, you will not find any better sounding headphones at this price range. If I should even compare the sound to any headphones I have ever tested, that would be the Bang & Olufsen H95, which retails for 800 euro, almost twice the price of the PS7 S2. So this is a better value for money. And, and so far, I am leaning towards keeping the headphone as my daily driver. Uh, yes, I have gotten rid of my AirPods Max, so there's space now for a new headphone for me, and I'm thinking, really thinking, about keeping the PS7 S2. So that's it. If you found this video informative, consider liking, commenting, and definitely subscribe to be notified when the next video drops. Also, follow us on social media, link in the description below. On that note, I wish you a lovely day or night, depending on your time zone, and see you soon. Bye-bye.